Hi guys, you're here with uh, Barry. I'm just making sure the sound's up here. And I want to introduce you to a new friend of mine I found out uh, through one of our excursion uh, tours, uh, Daryl. Daryl, say hi to everybody out Hello, there. Hello everybody. Um, I want to, you know, I've done so many of these videos with uh, folks from different parts of the world and everything like that, but you know, we've done countless, and when it comes to something unique and interesting, uh, I want to always get it on film, and uh, Daryl's, uh, he's in his mid-30s, and uh, a fella that's got quite a bit of traveling experience, and quite a bit of experience actually in the DR, and I thought you guys would really, really be um, more informed by listening on some of the things that Daryl has to say, so first of all, thanks a lot for doing this, Daryl, I appreciate it. Uh, no problem at all, no uh, problem. I wanted to ask you, out of all the places you've traveled, and those lines are working when I talk, right? And yeah, yeah, they're working. Perfect. Yep. All the places that you've traveled, can you give a list of some of them and uh, just kind of let our subscribers know a little bit about some of the places you've been to? Okay, yeah, I mean, I've been through uh, all throughout the Caribbean, Bahamas, uh, Aruba, uh, Turks and Caicos, been to Mexico, Colombia, uh, Venezuela, uh, Pretty much most of the Americas I've been through. I'd say that's that'll, that'll sum it up pretty much. And what about, um, how long have you determined that the DR was right for you? And, and uh, after that, why did the DR seem to be the best place for you? And I'm not saying it's for everybody, but I am saying obviously you've taken a liking to it. And no folks, el hombre no es dominicano, okay? When I first saw him, I said, coño, de hell es hombre dominicano, and, but he's not, okay? No, not Dominican at all. No, I'm 100% uh, I'm, uh, American. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and I guess to answer that question, Barry, it was, uh, I came over here probably about, I'd say five or six years ago, something around there, and uh, I love the atmosphere. The people are really nice, easily, easy to get along with. Um, you know, you don't really have any problems, you know, driving around town, trying to find your way. You can always just ask somebody, you know, okay, I'm looking for, you know, I'm looking for the nearest gas station, or I'm looking to see where the supermarket's at, you know. They're all happy to point you in the right direction and uh, let you know, okay, well, this is where that's at. They don't. They don't. They're not. You know. I guess kind of stuck up as you kind of find in New York or some of these bigger cities. You know, in uh, in uh, North America. And uh, I mean, it's just uh, to me, it was just paradise. You know, it just it really spoke to me. Was it also though the fact that I do know uh, that you do speak Spanish? You made the effort to learn. Mm -hmm. And I also know you have a son, a young son, since I've learned on our trip. Yes. What I, what I would like to know, though, is what made you consider here, was it, did you find, that besides friendliness, was there anything else that led you to that? Would it be anything in terms of, um, do you, what made you choose here, in other words, like other than Colombia or, or, or some of the other places? Was it value? Was it political stability? Was it the terrain? What, what, yeah, it was all it was all of the above. I mean, uh, political stability is, is was a very big one. Uh, the value is just, you know, you can't beat it. I mean, um, you know, one dollar for you know you get fifty pesos on one dollar. Uh, I mean, you can eat a, a decent a decent meal for you know five bucks here. You know, nice huge big full meal yeah. for five bucks. You know, I mean, uh, we just did. Yeah, we just exactly <laughs> we just we just had one. You know, this is 2019. You know, I mean, so. Uh, we all know, you know, inflation and all that kind of stuff, but, uh, you know, you really get more bang for your buck here. Uh, as far as terrain goes, I mean, you've got everything here. You've got mountains, you've got, you know, you know, world around beaches, you know. Um, like I said, the, the value's there, so, I mean, if you, you know, whatever you want to get done, I mean, labor is cheap here, you know. Uh, it's, it, it really, really spoke to me, you know. Um, it spoke to my wallet, <laughs> for one of them. <laughs> And that that was a big one, you know. I mean, in all honesty, that was just that was a very big one, you know. Uh, I'm not looking to work, you know, all the until you know 65. I'd like to go ahead and, you know, continue to work, you know, through 65, God willing. But, you know, I want to live a little bit more. You know, I want to uh, be able to experience life and not have to just be confined to an office, you know, all the time. And, you know, here will, you know, to me, it'll afford that type of lifestyle. You know, I can buy a nice plot of land here and build and, you know, support a family. It's still got great educational options here, you know, international schools. Um, you know, I'm the type of person that I, uh, 
I find it interesting to, to learn another language, and I, I made that effort to do it. I'm not, you know, fluent by any means, but, you know, overspending time here, you know, I'd, I'd like to, in my humble opinion, I'd like to say that I've become conversational at least. Oh, absolutely. To, uh, more, more than that even. Yeah, at least to get around and do what I have to do. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, like Barry mentioned, I have a son. You know, I want my son to be, you know, bilingual, hopefully trilingual. Um, and uh, I just feel that that is kind of a, uh, a great asset to have, especially when, you know, bringing another person into the world. You know, that's kind of the way that I feel the world is going towards. It's going towards a more global community. You know, everybody is, you know, through technology, I mean, there's so much out there. But uh, I guess that, that'll answer the question. What about in the States? I know you have um, you have your own business that you run. Uh-huh. And it's uh, it's um, it's a, uh, a selling and probably wholesale retail. It's a, a liquor business. Yeah, retail. Retail. And uh, does that give you enough time to get away from the from the business to to plot out the ideas that you're planning? Because I know you come to the country. I mean, you're here what eight, ten times a year. Yeah, easily eight, ten times a year. I come here about once a month. You know, and I spend about uh, anywhere between five and two five days and two weeks here you know every trip and uh it's really basically just uh kind of in my opinion for me it's just me kind of just orchestrating my lifestyle to afford uh that uh financial freedom and that time freedom that uh that i'm looking for and i think that it's it's doable for pretty much anybody you know i mean as long as you you know put in the dedication put in the time you know and are really focused on achieving that goal I, you know i think that you know, more people could actually, you know, make that switch. It's just, uh, you know, just come down here, check it out. It's not for everybody, but, you know, it is, you know, I can say that it is, it is for me. What do you say to the people? Because as we got to know each other a little bit, naturally, when people spend time with old Barry, we start talking questions and this and that. And, you know, I, I'll talk as deep as a person's comfortable at what level their understanding is. Uh, the thing is, um, I know you, how are you handling the objections from friends and family about your ideas of relocating to a foreign country? Uh, you know, I don't really take it all that personal, you know, I, you know, I, they are their opinions and, um, you know, if uh, that is their opinion, they're entitled to it, you know, uh, my opinion just so happens to differ from, you know, friends and family who might, you know, disagree or, you know, think otherwise, but you know, again, that's their opinion, um, and uh, I can't say that they're wrong, I can't say that I'm right, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's just my choice to live like this, and I so happen to be pretty happy with my uh, with my choices, you know. I, I asked you the question, uh, because a lot of other people tell me they get a lot of peer pressure about your crazy thinking, <laughs> or moving to a different country in the world, or, yes. or uh, you know, and, and uh, I know just from previous talking, you've experienced some of that as well, Yes. but um, you think then if a person really knows what they want in life and goes out, to, then, then he takes everything in stride, but, he, but they still make their own decisions. They're not led to be part of the pack. They, they, they be a lone herd if they want to. Yeah, I mean, um, I think you'll have more regrets by just following the herd than, you know, stepping out and trying to do what you've always dreamed of doing or what you do dream of doing. I mean, like they say, you only live once, and I'm pretty sure that's a true statement. Um, you know, so I mean, I just, I would encourage anybody uh, to go ahead and just do what they feel is right and uh, do what's in their heart to do. And if you find that it's for you, go for it, you know, mm -hmm. just, just do it, you know. Just I've always it. said there's no place that's for everybody. Yeah. You know, and it's all up to the individual people as to what interests them. Mm -hmm. But uh, anybody else that's contemplating going out and learning and looking at different things in life, but are a little bit facing a little bit of peer pressure, but possibly uh, quite, I guess, understandably, a little bit of fear. I mean, I'm not a good example because I live most of my life in different countries. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are looking for a change, what kind of, not advice, but what kind of words can you tell them to do to, to get on their merry way and go and visit and do whatever they want to do and not worry about those type of things? Yeah, I think the best uh, the best phrase is just do it like a Nike something. Nike? Yeah. yeah, just do it, you know, just do it and uh, give, it a, give it a try because, um, 
you know, there's always going to be fears in, in anything, you know, I mean, where you're living it might not be, you know, what it is, you know, in two or three years from now. I mean, just go ahead and give it a try, see, you know, see if it works for you. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, okay, well, you know, now you know it didn't work, you know, now, now you know that's not for you, but you'll never know unless you try. What about crime? Because you're living in St. Louis, as you said, and you've been all around this island. I know I'm just not wow. not in Cabrera. Was a guy like me able to show you anything new? Oh, my. Well, I mean, I, you, you're pretty experienced about this place. Yeah, yeah, I've been here. Like I said, I've been coming here for about six years. I've been all throughout the island, Hirabacoa, uh, Puerto Plata, um, La Serena, Samana, all up and down the Samana Peninsula, Punta Cana, La Romana, Boca Chica, Wando. I mean, I can just keep going on and on. Um, but I can honestly say in just these few days, I have learned a, an incredible amount of information that I would have not have learned if I had not have made this choice to come hang out with Barry. And I'm not, and I'm not pumping Barry up by any <laughs> means, but it is, it, it is just the truth, you know, you know, everything from the banking system, from, um, you know, Napoleonic na, law, na, Napoleon, <laughs> Napoleonic law, I would have not known that, you know, and that's a very, very, that's a very valuable piece of information, uh, for those trying to relocate. Um, it's just, you know, you want to get in touch with the right people. And Barry, in my opinion, is one of those right people that you would want to know and, uh, you know, want to become friends with for sure. Because uh, they, somebody who is in the know, somebody who, um, you know, knows the right people to get in touch with should you have a question. Um, it's just, uh, it's nice to have somebody like that, you know, around or on your team. Well, that's, that, yeah, that's the thing, you know, because I'm the first one to say it on a, a lot of YouTubes. Um, it's just so long I've lived in places like this, but um, old Barry sure don't know everything, but chances are old Barry's going to know somebody who does know the answer to what you're looking for. You know, it might be the mayor, or it might be a friend, or it might be a local farmer I know, or it might be one of the people we've relocated. Like, uh, there's some folks, I won't mention names, but uh, seven, eight years ago relocated them, and... And she's a wealth of knowledge for local people, and she also helps a lot of the families that come down here. Um, can you get a sense of camaraderie around Cabrera? Oh, wow. Yes, definitely. I mean, um, as far as, like you spoke about earlier, crime, I mean, um, crime is, you know, you can walk in Cabrera, you know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. You know, you can just walk around just by yourself. There's... There, in my opinion, I haven't seen the crime. You know, I haven't seen where the crime Yeah, there goes. is, I'm but sure. I mean, it's yeah. just, uh, by by no stretch of uh, any stretching it, I mean, you got to remember, but you go back to whatever country you live in now, whether it's Europe, America, Canada, mm -hmm. and all day long you're hearing crime. Crime, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's comparative, in my opinion. I mean, in comparison to, you know, as some people who know who are familiar with America, some people who know about St. Louis, in comparison to a place like St. Louis, it's non-existent, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's so, true. Yeah, uh, the, the, but it, there's a lot more people in St. Louis, but yeah. that's true. I mean, there are break and enters and stuff, and there is the occasional once in a while uh, a crime uh, against a person. But uh, by in any stretch, is it is it uh, out of means or uncon? No, I, I believe in the country towns, you're far safer than you are in the big cities in this country, but also in many cities back in uh, where I'm from in Canada and. From what more and more people are uh, leaning me to believe, uh, America as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, that doesn't really, and I'm not going to even just say that's just for Cabrera. In general, I don't really think that um, the media really portrays the Dominican Republic in the right fashion. And, you know, I don't know what other people think about it, but it really is not, I guess, what you would think of, a, whatever somebody would think of a third world country. It's really not that. It's not, you know, you got to be careful where you go at all the time. I mean, obviously, be smart about, you know, what you do but as far as crime and you know you know bad people and stuff like that this place is i mean in my opinion it's safer than most of the big cities that you go to in america well that's i haven't been there in so long i'm going to canada this summer for a wedding and i got mixed emotions about even doing that but yeah from what people are telling me uh where the like again one of the biggest ways we came up with the name something feels wrong because everybody's telling me something feels wrong yeah and uh what kind of, in closing this up, because uh, I want to continue on, I want to show you some other things, and uh, we're going to the carpenters. Okay. Because the wood came in from my picture frames. Wonderful. So, uh, other than that, is there any um, last minute things you want to say, or maybe any, any ideas or suggestions? Because like I say, you've, you have family here, 
Uh, you, you've been in all points of this island. It's very rare I meet somebody that's covered as much terrain here as yourself. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is there any last thing before we cut camera that you'd love to tell other people about your experience or anything like that? Uh, you know, I can't really say any, any one real phrase that I like to say, but I mean, I, you know, just go ahead and give it a try. You know, go ahead and see if you like it. If you like it, great. And, you know, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But, you know, um, this country has a lot to offer, you know, a lot of different, um, you know, vibes. I mean, you've got everything from, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, Harabacoa. If you like, you know, the mountainous area, you've got Santa Domingo, uh, Santiago de los Caballeros. You have, uh, you know, Las Serenas. You've got Cabr uh, Cabrera, uh, Puerto Plata. All these different places, they have their own vibe. Yeah. They have their own, you know atmosphere so if you come to one part of the island and it doesn't really suit you you know give it you know go ahead and take some time out and you know maybe not in one trip but the next trip try to check out another you know part of town that way you can see if you really like if, if you think the dominican republic might be a place where you might want to relocate to go ahead and you know try a few different you know cities around town you know that's about all i can say about it well, Daryl, in closing off, I do want to thank you for your time. I do hope you make a positive decision about becoming yeah. uh, a few more people that come to our region and make it their place they want to call home. And until next time, this is Daryl and Barry. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.